Hello, my name is Shahan Derekar Abadian, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how I've been using machine learning and species delimitation. So obviously this symposium is about the computational tools, but as you'll see, the way I approach species delimitation relies heavily on the biology of the organism. So species delimitation in general includes two types of analyses, discovery and validation. Discovery-based analyses do not require a priori hypotheses before the analysis. And the purpose of this phase is to identify preliminary groups that serve as species level hypotheses that are then tested in the validation phase. And validation-based analyses rely on some biological model to inform species limits. Now, species delimitation can be difficult for many reasons. One of those reasons is the fact that speciation is a continuous process, and it can be difficult to know when to draw the line between populations and species. Another reason is due to the diversity of the tax that we are trying to delimit, particularly when we use genetic data. And that is because different organismal types have different underlying genetic patterns associated with populations and species. So for example, a species of albatross will have different underlying genetic patterns compared to a species of montane salamander. So how we delimit species in practice is dependent on the biology of the taxa we study. Now the taxa I study are a group of arachnids called apiliones. Many apiliones come with a particular set of biological characteristics. They tend to undergo non-ecological speciation, and this includes many different aspects. First, nested allopatry. This means that distinct genetic lineages rarely, if ever, overlap in geographic space. And this is true for populations, sets of populations, all the way up to species among a group of closely related species. They also tend to have, show niche conservatism, which leads to morphological conservatism across species boundaries. They also have low dispersal ability and high ecological constraints, meaning they have very specific microhabitat preferences. Now, these two together often lead to inherently high levels of population genetic structure within a species. Now, these characteristics often lead to cryptic speciation, which is, of course, problematic to deal with when delimiting species. Now, these characteristics are not just limited to apiliones. They're, of course, found across the broad tree of life. However, however they are particularly problematic in taxa like apiliones because we can often end up with situations where we have two dozen species in a relatively small geographic distribution where none of those species overlap in geographic space and the majority of those species are only known from one or two localities. So in taxa like this, morphology and ecology lump diversity. We cannot use characteristics like reproductive isolation. So we have to rely instead on genetic data, particularly for cryptic species. However, there's a problem in that many genetic-based validation methods tend to overestimate species numbers and instead identify populations. And this is particularly true for systems where there are inherently high levels of population genetic structure like the tax that I study. Now, this issue has been documented empirically many times across many arthropod groups, vertebrates, and in plants, even including some taxa that I would not consider dispersal limited. So the question is, how do we delimit species particularly cryptic species using genetic data in taxa that have this issue and in uh, where we can't use these programs or these methods that oversplit. So that is why I got into machine learning. Coincidentally, there are two different types of machine learning in, in general. Uh, first, unsupervised and then supervised. Unsupervised just means that your data are unlabeled. This is essentially dimensionality reduction. Supervised our classification tools, particularly when applied to species delimitation, in that they use a labeled training data set to inform an unknown data set. So you can obviously see the similarities between discovery and unsupervised and validation and supervised approaches. And this is how I approach species delimitation using machine learning. So I'm going to showcase each of these using two different studies. So first, talking about unsupervised. We focused on a genus called Metanonychus. What we did was showcase three different machine learning algorithms and how they can be used as dimensionality reduction tools for species delimitation. And this is something we published a few years ago. So before the methods, biology. The genus Metanonychus is distributed throughout the Pacific Northwest of North America, where you can find them in the beautiful forests 
they're typically associated with uh, leaf litter, woody debris, and sometimes underneath rocks. So we basically did an integrative taxonomic revision combining multiple data types to inform species limits. So using the ultra conserved element data, we showcased three different machine learning algorithms, unsupervised approaches as dimensionality reduction tools. And these included random forest, T distributed stochastic neighbor embedding or TSNE, and variational autoencoders also known as BAEs. Now I don't have time to explain how they work, but I will say that BAEs are by far the most useful and I'll kind of give some reasons why soon. So here's the results. You should be, might be familiar with structure, but here's principal components analysis. Here we have random forest, TSNE, and BAE. One thing that is very obvious is that in particular, BAE and TSNE represent the data better in two-dimensional space compared to principal components analysis. So specifically focusing on BAE, this is a type of neural network that is used to learn a reduced representation of a data set in an unsupervised manner. So what we're seeing here is what's called latent space. And each point is a mean of that sample in latent space. We can also include the standard deviation. And what that looks like is this. It's essentially a cloud around each sample. And this makes it relatively easy to assess uncertainty around our individual clusters or, or samples. So obviously it's an easy situation in Metanonychus, but the standard deviation is particularly useful in, in more complex situations. For example, in this genus of lizard, where we have this highly admixed hybrid species, where in latent space overlaps with the two parental species. So our, our VAE model has been used many times uh, for species delimitation across a wide range of taxa that vary in their number of legs and whether or not they have a backbone. Uh, a separate VAE model was more recently used in the population genetic context. So the VAE is becoming a very useful tool for, for many things. So to sum up uh, this study, I'm just gonna say that species delimitation in Metanonychus was very easy. There was high congruence across data types and, more, and, and, and analysis types, including essentially all of the unsupervised machine learning approaches. As expected, genetic-based validation approaches oversplit so to sum up, I have 100% confidence in the delimited species, and that's gonna become important later. Okay, now switching to a supervised approach, and this focuses on the species Theromaster bruneus. The species has an abnormally large distribution for a single species of Apillionis. It's found in the Southern Appalachian Mountains, a region of high endemic biodiversity. Like Metanonychus, you can find this species in the moist forest associated with leaf litter, woody debris, and underneath rocks. So again, we did an integrative taxonomic revision for this species, knowing that there is at least more than one because it's the Southern Appalachians, and of course there is. So what I'll mention here is that there are high levels of population genetic structure, even in the most derived lineages. There are deep genetic divergences between some of the lineages we have defined. And looking at morphology, it's essentially entirely morphologically conservative, except for this single individual here, which is morphologically distinct. As taxonomists, we would say that this is a distinct species. So the question is, how many cryptic species are there? Are there cryptic species and how many are there in the rest of this group? So, as opposed to Metanonychus, there is absolutely no congruence across a data type or analyses for Theromaster bruneus. As taxonomists, we had a gut feeling of three species, and one of the analyses reflected that, but there are some difficulties associated with that analysis, which I, I can't really go into. So we didn't know what to do. We didn't know how many species there were. We had an idea, but it wasn't reflected in our results. So this is why I wanted to try a supervised machine learning approach to see if we can get a, a solid answer and some congruence. So uh, interestingly, there was a, a, a program called Clades published in 2018, which is a, a support vector machine learning uh, based analysis that is a classification tool that relies on a two species model to classify samples as either, as either the same or different species. This 
program came with what I'm going to call a default training data set. And this uh, training data set was based on simulated data derived from population parameters representing a broad range of plant and animal taxa. They tested this uh, uh, default training data set on a number of empirical systems, and they showed that it worked. It recovered correctly the number of species. So what happens when we apply it to a, a, a species like Theromaster bruneus? It oversplits. It says every single population, in this case, every single individual is a distinct species, which we know <laughs> is not true. So why is this failing? And in more in general, why do these validation analyses fail in taxa like this? And I'll explain it this way. Imagine an n-dimensional biological characteristic space. All the biological and ecological characteristics that go in, into explaining the underlying genetic patterns of, of a taxon or a particular species. So this is represented, of course, in two dimensions here. We can imagine a default training data set or any fixed model can capture this much of that space. However, somebody's particular organismal group might occupy this much space, and somebody else's particular organismal group occupies only this much space. And if you're like me, your organismal group does not exist in that space at all. So these analyses fail. So one of the powerful things about supervised machine learning is that we can make custom training data sets for each of these organismal types. So the, now I need to come up with a, a training data set, a custom training data set for uh, low dispersal apiliones. And what I did is I used metanomycus because I have 100% confidence in how I defined the species. And why can these be, why can metanomycus be used for Theromaster? It's because they have the same biological and ecological characteristics, the same microhabitat preference, and the same mode of speciation. Therefore, they should have very, very similar underlying genetic patterns associated with populations and species. So that's what I did. I made a custom training data set out of Metanonychus and applied it to Theromaster, and the results said two cryptic species. When we take those two cryptic species and add it to that third morpho species I mentioned earlier, we get three species, which of course agreed with our uh, initial gut feeling. Now, two cryptic species is an entirely reasonable answer. So we are happy to see this reflected in a supervised machine learning approach. And as a, taxon as a taxonomist uh, who relies heavily on the biology of the organism, I think this is a, a great way to delimit species using genetic data, particularly when they are cryptic. So kind of summing this up, this approach using the supervised machine learning uh, uh, algorithm is universally applicable in that we can make specific custom training data sets that are, that are specific to any organismal type and data type. For example, I used UCE data only for uh, uh, this, this analysis. So this approach uses the flexibility of machine learning algorithms to accommodate the biological var variability that's inherent in uh, across the tree of life, combining computational objectivity desired in species delimitation analyses with organismal expertise derived from years of experience and our knowledge of the natural history of the taxon. So I'll leave it there. Um, I'll thank you for your time. Thank you uh, to the organizers for inviting me and I will happily take any questions. Thank you.